do a coherent portrait, what you get really is two very different kind of oil and water things which don't really mix too well. You have, on the one hand, this guy who teaches in these fascinating parables and aphorisms, or shall we say uh, wisdom sayings, and then says, you know, let those who have ears to hear, let them hear, which means figure it out for yourself. Mm. And who teaches people to love their enemies and to you know, do all these unexpected things like, you know, like uh, love people who are of different ethnic uh, background than your own. So you've got that portrait. And on the other hand, you've got this other guy saying, oh, yeah, and by the way, the world's ending soon and God's going to smoke you if you don't get on my, on my train. Those two things just seem so completely in, incompatible. They seem like, yeah, it's, yeah. like it's two different characters who are being mixed together. And historically, the seminar's work has helped us to see that both of those portraits are intelligible. One comes from the historical Jesus, and the other comes from the Christians about 30 or 40 years after his death, who are trying to uh, redo his his life and teachings in a context that makes sense to them in their times of enormous stress. Of course, this is the kind of thing that a lot of our uh, detractors and uh the apologists don't buy. I, I kind of running out of time, but I cannot let this and go past. I, I just find I debate uh, fundamentalist uh, scholars and apologists fairly regularly, and it's often frustrating. I, I'd like to hear your uh, stance about whether these debates have any value. I believe I know what it is, and it's very interesting. I think that the net effect of these is is to lend legitimacy to fundamentalist scholars, because it looks as if we are taking them seriously as colleagues and peers, whereas, in fact, their assumptions are so fundamentally different from what I would think of as true and honest critical scholarship. I mean, all of their decisions and all of their positions are predictated by their conservative theology. And, and I just, I'm really worried that the net effect of these, of, you know, of people like you and me debating with them is to lend them a credibility that they really don't deserve. So I have a lot of reservations about, about these uh, debates. What do you think, Bob? Well, I believe you're correct, but on the other hand, it enhances their credibility in the eyes of their own uh, constituency anyway. They're believing the same thing they would about the legitimacy of their uh, scholars and their viewpoint, no matter what I might say. And I feel like there are probably, there probably is a thin edge of questioning or, or unconvinced people that uh, may hope the apologetics are true and fear that they are not. And if I have the chance to get in there and say, well, you know, your fears are well-founded. These people sadly do not know whereof they speak. I think I might be doing a favor to those people and the other ones. If it's just entertainment to them, so be it. Uh, I, I think you are right. It's just uh, I'm kind of aiming at a very thin slice of the audience. And the questions I usually get when the exchange is over tends to kind of confirm my hope that uh, a surprising number of them have genuine questions and aren't just trying to put me in my place, and, and uh, which I thought they would all be doing. But surprisingly, a lot of them really do seem to want to hear another side. So I, I keep it up when I'm asked to do it. I'd never initiate them. And you are right, though, that one by bad byproduct, like Dawkins says about evolution, there is the risk of making people think that we're taking them more seriously than we are. Well, I mean, I was talking about the uh, effect this creates among scholars, you're talking about the effects on the real-life audience. So I think what you had to say is really doesn't contradict what I say, and and I'm you know I have to I'll have to think more about what you say because you know many of us you know who are in this position you know came out of pretty pretty traditional backgrounds and can point to some experience of reading or hearing someone talk, you know, that really helps us, helped us to question things in a way that sets, that set us free from those kinds of uh, intellectual shackles.